The ERIC Database, brought to you by California State University San Bernardino's John M. Fowle Library. To find the ERIC Database, start on the library's website. Scroll down and click on the Choose a Database button. This gets you to our list of more than 150 databases that we've divided up into large subject areas. The ERIC database appears under several of these areas. In this demonstration, I'm going to click on the section for Kinesiology. And on the list of databases recommended for Kinesiology, we see that ERIC is the third one down. Just click on the title and use your My Coyote login to get access. The ERIC Database, uh, Eric is not the name of the guy that does the database, it's an acronym for the Education Resources Information Center, which is a government entity. And the content in this database uh, is scholarly and professional resources and education for all age groups and all subjects. So I'm going to enter my keyword search in the box here. And before I run my search, I'm going to scroll down and click the Scholarly or Peer Reviewed Journals box. If you forget to do this, you will get an option to, to select this after you run your search. I want to point out something here that will screw up your research if you don't know about it. If you see a full text box on the search screen of any of our databases, never click in it. When you click in that full text box on the search screen, it turns off a system we paid extra for that overlays all of our 150 databases that gets you the maximum amount of full text possible. If you make a mistake and you click in that full text box on the search screen, you will only get the full text in that one database and you'll miss everything else. So don't mess with these guys. We tried to make them disappear, but we couldn't. Okay, so I'm all set to go, and I'm going to click Search. And I've got 29 results for my keyword search. I'm going to refine this a little bit further. I'm going to scroll down and use the sliding date scale here to choose the last five years. and my list updates automatically. Okay. So what are we seeing here in this list? We're seeing article title, authors, journal title, and journal publication date. We're seeing a full text link and we're seeing the subjects that have been assigned to this particular article. Let's take a closer look. I'm going to click on the title to go to a more detailed screen. We're seeing some of the same things here, just in a different format. The title of the article, the authors, source is the title of the journal with those particulars there, and again, we've got that link that we can click for the full text. If you scroll a little bit further, you're going to see the descriptors, which is what uh, the ERIC database folks call subject headings. Um, these are the subjects that they have discovered in this article, and they've assigned these words to the record for this article so that you can find it more easily with your keyword searches. This is a great place to check to see if there's a keyword that you could use in your search. And below that we see the abstract or summary, which allows you to get an idea of whether this article is a good fit for your research before you bother finding that full text. 
On the right hand side, we've got a variety of controls that you can use at this point. And these are mostly self-explanatory, but I do want to show you the site feature. Once you select that, you have a choice of different formats. And there's APA and Chicago and MLA is in here as well. Let me just close that out. Now you want to be careful with the automatically generated citations. You want to check them for any errors uh, because they're being done by uh, databases and not by people. And let me go back to that result list. And in this database you can go through and add items that you like to a folder. And I'm going to click the second one there, so you have something to look at. Now the difference between these two that I've just selected is the first one has the full text from Eric. So when I put that in my folder and then I print, save, or email it, I'm going to get that full text. The second one has our blue search for full text button. This is telling us that the full text exists in another database somewhere maybe. And if we add that to the folder and print save or email, we're not going to get that full text. We're going to get what we see on the detailed screen. So do be aware of that. And once you've selected things in your folder, up at the top, this tiny little yellow folder is where you can access those. And when you click on that to open it, you've got the main controls over here, print, save, email. And you can select all of them or just one of them. And when you choose one of these controls, we'll pretend that we're going to save this, you get a choice of a citation format. And I'll choose APA. So we're back at the result list. And let's see if we can find the full text of number two here. I'm going to click that button, search for full text. And search for full text will be absolutely truthful with you. If it doesn't find it anywhere in our databases, it will first give you a choice of checking for a free version in Google Scholar. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes not. Let's see what happens here. And we do get lucky. We find the full text PDF on this website here. So we can go to that website and download the full text. And go back to that result list. And let's try one more, number three here. Search for full text. And now we've got a link to the other database where that full text lives. If we don't find the full text of an article, you can always order it through the Interlibrary Loan Service. Uh, those articles are delivered electronically to your email in about three working days. And on that little pop-up that we saw before where we got the option for Google Scholar, the next option on that box was to submit a request for an interlibrary loan. The end. Thank you for watching and good luck with your research.